what I thought I'd do today is talk about how this fourth industrial age is starting to emerge. If you look at the nature of work today, it's really about how more autonomous capabilities can emerge in the market. And in particular, the use of applied artificial intelligence really is changing the nature of blue collar work. What you're seeing up here is a screen of what an industrial work site looks like. In this case, it's a mining aggregates location. You're using capability that's been in market for a while, whether it be laser guided precision equipment, whether that be information that you know, might be carrying a backpack on a GPS device and going up one of those stockpiles to go measure what the volumetrics effectively look like on that stockpile. It turns out that there are better ways to do this today. One of the most efficient ways that we're seeing in the aggregates mining space to be able to accomplish that same workload, which would literally have taken days, weeks, is actually being done with a drone. So today, a drone can autom autonomously fly where it's taking high resolution imagery of that specific location. It's then taking a three dimensional model that's being created of that high resolution imagery and then automating the volumetrics that surround it. So when you look at this opportunity that's occurring in the market, we're seeing these enormous potentials that are emerging because of the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence. One of the key criteria that I'm now seeing in particularly another industrial use case is how the drone is actually being used in the case for claims automation. What you're seeing right here is a roof. In this case, this roof has been impacted by hail strike. And so let's actually look at these little dots here on the surface of the roof. We're actually using machine learning algorithms, mostly sort of Google TensorFlow based algorithms to now customize and identify what hail strike looks like. Now, we can actually identify that hail strike in a way where it can be distinguished between hail and hammer. If someone is actually fraudulently taking a hammer to the roof during the time of an incremental weather event and committing fraud subsequently, we can actually distinguish that now. We're seeing now as many as 11 out of the top 20 PNC carriers, property casualty insurance carriers, now starting to use these techniques to understand how to take advantage, say for instance, of a machine learning algorithm being applied for roof inspection. What I see as an opportunity in this world is really this convergence of how digital twins really take a lot of the redundancy of what's occurring in terms of how you can collect this information, how you can actually analyze it, how you can process it in a meaningful way, and deliver it in a much safer manner than you've ever been able to before. If you look at what these workloads have looked like for many, many years in these industrial sectors, they've been actually very long, arduous manual processes that really have not had that opportunity to have the augmentation of machine capabilities being considered in how the man works. And so we see this real opportunity at Caspery to continue to drive this digital twin that emerges with the convergence of how we think about sort of physical and virtual assets. This is what we see in this sort of fourth industrial age. This idea that you can actually converge physical and cyber assets in a meaningful way and do it with a level of safety that frankly is unprecedented. Because before, if you had to go and create this particular model. And so this model that you're seeing here is literally that stockpile analysis where we've taken a whole series of point cloud data from that high resolution imagery, decimated it, and created these little triangles that you're seeing that formulate this three dimensional model are hyper accurate within three centimeters. So you can get multiple millions of points being generated for hyper accuracy in a way to just model real space in a way that you couldn't actually do even five, 10 years ago. So why does this matter? Well, let me actually give you an example here. So John Davenport works for Whitaker Construction. He's actually 54 years old and he's actually gonna retire early. Why? Because he's got a bad back and his knees have taken a toll because he's actually had to climb these stockpiles for many, many years. When he went to his manager about retirement, he actually said, you know what? How do we figure out a way to keep John in the workforce longer? 
How do we enable him to be more successful without the fact that he can no longer climb the stockpile any longer? And it turns out that his manager went online and said, well, you know, can the drone potentially do the work of just making sure the analysis and the collection of that data could be feasibly accomplished without the safety factor of John himself climbing the stockpile? But I checked, it turns out that that's actually quite possible. Today, you're seeing over 120 aggregates mining companies starting to use technology like this to be able to accomplish what John would previously have done, say, for instance, with days and weeks of work and then calculation that followed in under an hour. And so the productivity that's now possible for someone who's operating say for instance, a quarry, say for instance, an aggregates location, say for instance, what's actually occurring in say the insurance sector, particularly when it comes to claims processing. These are now 100x changes that are now possible, particularly with the introduction of the drone. What I see is a real interesting future that's emerging. So about 60 years ago, JCR Licklider wrote a very seminal piece of, uh, a paper, it was, it was about six or eight pages long, and it talked about the man-computer symbiosis. It was written in 1960. And in a lot of ways, he was far ahead of his time because he literally talked not about this idea that, that machines would somehow replace us. It would be that machines would actually give us this ability to augment our human potential. And this is where I see this possibility of really how drones, the technology that surrounds the automation that we're providing today can really complement and augment the human potential. So we're focused to really help define that future of this sort of fourth industrial age as it's emerging, because we believe that this new sensor network of data collection that's possible, because you can have visual sensors, hyperspectral sensors, ability to get humidity, heat temperature sensors, all integrated into one experience. Couple that with the artificial intelligence that's emerging, and then converge that into digital and physical assets really coming together is the way that this fourth industrial age will come forward. So I appreciate this opportunity to just have this quick conversation. And uh, Matthew, I think I have one question I'm gonna be able to take. Yes, thank you, George. I'll make it a two-part question. One is, um, you know, how, roughly how many drones are currently in use in industrial yeah. purposes. So well, right? uh, clearly there's a lot more drones in the commercial world, right? Sorry, in the consumer world right now in comparison. So when you think about the industrial use cases and you know, more broadly in the, uh, in the commercial sector, we're talking now about tens of thousands of drones, and that's actually increasing exponentially. And where are most of those being used? No surprise, uh, the heavier industries that I just highlighted. Uh, today, it's in metals, mining, aggregates. You're seeing that now in this sort of hail season that's emerging. A lot of the insurance carriers are actually now investing heavily into the use case. And then in architecture, engineering, construction. So earthworks, construction projects are a big area where drones are now being deployed. In a I mean, I was, I was gonna also ask you how many people really are going around on their roof with a hammer uh, a hail. So, but, so I, um, I, will, I will answer that question. One, one industry I didn't miss though is there is actually quite a bit of activity in precision agriculture as well. So I didn't miss that with that one industry. That's pretty big. So it turns out that how many people are actually going out and hitting, uh, you know, the roof with a hammer, it's an annualized $3 billion challenge in the insurance sector right now. Yeah. Good grief. Turns out that's a thing. <laughs> so I've learned something today. Thank you very yeah, much. Absolutely. George.